So this past weekend I was out buying another power tool for my collection. Now I'm still in the single digits of power tools and I'm currently using 18 volt Makita. Now will I stick with them long term? We'll see. I'm looking at a few different options because I am going to gear up the power tools that I have and I want to make the smart decision because as you know if you bought power tools it's critical to stay with the same lineup so you can leverage those batteries as they're so expensive. But back to the tool that I bought, in the box was this monster brochure of all the different options that Makita has. Now Makita doesn't even have the most option for power tools, but they literally have hundreds and hundreds of power tools. So it got me thinking for new homeowners or DIYers that are looking to build out their collection of power tools so they can take on bigger projects around the house, you know, where do you even start? Obviously you want to make sure you get the most bang for your buck and value as you start to get those first few power tools. So today we'll look at the top three power tools that you should have in your collection. Now this will leverage obviously my experience, but also we got great feedback from the viewers with over a thousand people voting on what they consider to be the highest priority power tools to tackle the widest array of jobs. Additionally, at the end, we'll talk when to buy, where to buy, hopefully saving you some money and getting you the best tools you can get, and then talk about brands. Is it DeWalt, Milwaukee, Makita, Ryobi, Brassman, Rigid, Tobo, Bosch. I mean, there's a ton of brands out there. So we got feedback from the viewers and for DIYers, what are those top brands that you guys pick? And hopefully that will help you out in your decision making. So let's jump in and look at the number one highest priority first tool to buy in the top three. It's probably no surprise and that is simply a variable speed drill. Now whether you're hanging things on the wall, you're tightening door hinges, maybe you're doing some decking or some exterior work, the variable speed cordless drill is going to come in super handy. I'm already going to throw you a bit of a curveball and say that number one should actually be a combo kit which are very common to get where you get your cordless drill and also your impact driver together. The drill is great for drilling holes, whether you're using a standard drill bit, a spade bit, a hole saw, or a number of other specialty tools like when you're installing recessed lighting. But your impact driver is, this is probably my most commonly used power tool just because it's so great at attaching any sort of fastener that you're working with. Additionally, if you have a home with a brick exterior or you might be attaching things to concrete, you might want to consider to get the combo kit with the impact driver and also a hammer drill. That's going to give you all the benefits of your multi-speed drill, but it's also going to have the hammer feature which is going to help you drill into brick, mortar, concrete if you need to fasten anything like a set of steps to a concrete pad or if you're hanging shutters on a brick exterior. Now you can expect to pay anywhere from a smoke and deal at 100 bucks for these combo, not necessarily Makita, up to 300 and higher, especially if you're getting the hammer drill for your multi-speed drill. Additionally, you'll probably want to go ahead and invest in a set of bits for your impact driver. That's gonna get you your Phillips, your flathead, your Robertson square head, torque bits, nut drivers. That's gonna set you up so you have the correct bit for the job. You'll even keep some of your specialty bits like I really like SPAC screws, so they have some specialty bits you can keep in there. And then for your drill, you'll want to get just your standard set of drill bits. Again, you don't wanna go one off go ahead and get the combo pack and that's going to save you time running to the home improvement store and also money in the long term. You can check in the description, you'll see links to examples of any of these tools, but obviously you can go to any home improvement store in your area and you're going to have a wide selection of both your drill and your impact driver, but also your sets of bits. So for number two, we're going with the circular saw. This is a six and a half inch, was kind of a classic size saw for cordless for many, many years. There really was no other options other than six and a half. Now it is a direct drive saw, so you'll see the motor coming off the side here, where then the gearing goes in and there's basically just what's called a spur gear that will then drive your saw blade. Nowadays, you can get a six and a half inch size like this, or you can step up to a seven and a quarter inch 
which is very common in your skill saws, your corded skill saws. And you can even go higher than that. Makita has some larger ones and skill saw, the brand themselves, have some saw, they're called saw squatches. They are huge and they start to get in the 10 inch or the corded even goes up higher where you're starting to be able to cut off four by four posts in one pass, which is pretty cool. The one thing I'll say with a six and a half inch, you can just see the sheer size of the motor itself is not very big. So if you need to rip a bunch of plywood, I would probably step up to a seven and a quarter inch that's gonna be able to deliver more torque. Makita specifically makes some versions that have two batteries, so we'll give it 36 volts. And also, instead of a direct drive, you can get what's called a worm drive saw, which many people prefer if you're doing a lot of ripping because the worm drive helps to deliver superior torque without slowing down the blade in the cut. The only other thing I would say is, remember, the blades are not one blade for all jobs. You have a wide variety. Here's a 150 tooth blade that might be used for plastic or maybe some thin plywood or something like a 16 tooth blade that's really more of a ripping blade. So make sure you have a few blades and make sure you keep your blades sharp, especially if you have the smaller six and a half direct because it's not gonna be able to provide that superior torque. So you need a really sharp blade. All right, and then the final number three for our list, I would say, is a sawzall. Now, here's where we get into the phase where people can probably agree and disagree, and it's going to kind of go down to what your projects are. I would say the sawzall or reciprocating saw really shines when you're doing demo. Now, whether you're just cutting framing with a standard wood blade, maybe you're cutting out old metal water lines with a metal blade, or what I love using it for is actually trimming trees. So if you have a yard and you need to kind of tame some of your trees, they do make the specialty blades that are made for easily trimming off branches. And this makes very quick work opposed to needing a chainsaw or getting out a chainsaw. I've cut very large branches with a sawzall. Overall, it's hard to go wrong with a sawzall, especially if you're doing that renovation or rehab work around the house. So that is the top three we're starting off with that drill slash impact driver. So that's your number one slot, circular slot for number two, and then sawzall for number three. Let me know what you guys think. What are your top threes? Put them down in the comments. I always appreciate your feedback. Now let's talk about when and where to buy in terms of saving money, and then also what brands to look at. So where to when to buy. Again, your, your comments are always appreciated. What's your experience? I have found the best deals and when I've stocked up is around Black Friday. Usually you can get awesome combo sets. Now, whether that's just that drill and impact driver combo or you're getting a full four, five, six, eight piece set with multiple batteries, you can get deep discounts and it's worth aligning to that time of year. There's other sales going on around Labor Day, Memorial Day, and others, but Black Friday is the best that I have found. And sometimes those are kind of door buster deals, so you do need to align your schedule to make sure they don't go out of stock. I also have seen in 2021 DeWalt giving some smoking deals on combo sets. Now, I believe what that is is DeWalt kind of flushing out the brushed version or older versions of their battery platform and their motor platform and then bringing in the brushless and the new battery platforms. I think that's why they're giving such great deals. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. You're gonna get a ton of awesome tools from DeWalt, which is one of the leaders, but you might not be getting the latest and greatest, and some of the new tools going forward might not be on that same platform. So something to consider. Now, when it comes to brands, there are many of those out there. A lot of those come to actually some of the same companies that make them or own them, uh, believe it or not, Stanley Black & Decker is the largest company that makes power tools. Once you add up all their different brands of Black & Decker, Porter Cable, Dewalt, and a few others that actually all go into the same company. Believe it or not, TTI, the holding company, owns Milwaukee and also Ryobi, which I would say are kind of at the ends of the spectrum in terms of quality and price. 
But overwhelmingly, DeWalt was actually the favorite of our viewers and the second place coming in in Milwaukee. Now, I think both of those brands are great in terms of quality. Pretty good bang for the buck. They're going to be a little more expensive. But most importantly is kind of to select that brand you want to go with because if you're going across multiple brands, your batteries are not going to swap back and forth. So if you're doing bigger projects and you don't have two, three, four, or more batteries, that can kind of bite you in the butt where you're waiting for your tools to charge up before you can continue on with the project. But let me know your guys' feedback. What are your top three tools? Do they align with what I said? And what is your go-to brand and why? And before you take off, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do that and hit that bell notification so you'll know as we put out multiple videos per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.